Hello, you are listening to Disney Travel Tales, episode number eight. This is a space where you can escape the real world and immerse yourself in someone's recent Disney trip. I'm Jenny, and today you are listening to my interview with Emily. Emily takes us back in time to October 2020 and tells us all about what the parks were like after they reopened. Emily has a big twist that she talks about, and you guys, you're not going to believe it. Did you know that there is a way to make planning your Disney vacation easier and less stressful? So many people feel overwhelmed planning their Disney vacation and have no idea that there are trained professionals out there to help. Our sponsor, Trolley Lane Travel, and owner Becky Abruzzetti are experts when it comes to Disney vacations. They are always up to date on specials Disney runs and have tips and tricks to help you navigate the parks easier. And guess what? This is all complimentary to you when you plan your trip with them. Saving you time and money is what they are best at. Visit them at trolleylanetravel.com and go to their request a quote page to get connected with an agent and start planning your magical vacation today. They are also on Facebook and Instagram at Trolley Lane Travel LLC. Tell them Disney Travel Tales sent you. Okay, so let's begin our adventure with Emily. Imagine yourself in your favorite line queue. Mine is Tower of Terror and let's go. for coming on the show. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Okay, so let's get started. Why don't you tell me your experience with Disney vacations? So my very first trip was in the year 2000 with my grandparents, my whole family. Um, Just a lot of fun. I know my youngest sister was only one, so it was quite a long time ago. Um, But I have gone every year since 2014. So I love going. I try to go and experience new hotels each time I go, um, try new restaurants and that type of thing. Um, I've been on a Disney cruise before. We went on the Disney Wonder to Castaway Key, and it was so much fun. Um, But overall, I just try to go every year since then. That's awesome. That's so cool. I'm a little bit jealous. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so your trip was right after... A few months after the park opened up due to COVID, correct? Yes, it was. Um, We went in October. Of 2020? Yes, October 2020. Okay. And what type of ticket did you have? We got the base tickets. Um, I'm somebody that's a strong believer you can spend a full day at each park. So I don't necessarily like to park up. I kind of just like to stay stationary and utilize my time to the fullest by experiencing the whole park. That's awesome. Um, And who did you travel with? This time I went with my mom, my two sisters, Sarah and Natalie, and then I went with my grandparents. Very cool. Did y'all fly? And if so, what airline did y'all fly? We used Southwest. That is my preferred airline. I just like that there's no hidden costs. You know exactly what you can bring, how many luggage, or I'm sorry, how many checked bags, everything like that. So it's very transparent, so they're the only ones I fly with. I totally agree. Um, a friend of mine just flew to Florida with Spirit, and she got there, and they are like, oh, you have to pay for this, and then you have to pay for this, and she was like, what? So yeah, right, a lot of times it ends up not even saving money at that point, so right. I just like it all done and over with. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, and how did y'all get to your resort? What transportation? <laughs> Yeah, we took the Magical Express. Okay, so awesome. we hopped right off the bus, it, our, or we hopped right off the airline. Our bus was ready in like ten minutes, if that. So we didn't wait in line at all, and everything was really spaced out from COVID. So we got a lot of the bus to ourselves, which is really nice. That's very cool. Okay, so you have a very interesting twist that happened before you left on your trip. Why don't you share about that? Yeah, so our trip was on a Monday. Um, that Saturday before, you know, it's the weekend before your trip. You're going to get your hair done and your nails and, like, get everything packed and things like that. So I had a full day plan. Uh, and then that day, my stomach started hurting so bad. 
Um, and I ended up just brushing it off. You know, I'm a mom. Like, I've been through birth. I, like, I know what hurts and what doesn't. But right. this was like, it just would not stop. So I went into the ER. Um, and four doctors came in and they said, we're going to do an emergency appendectomy on you. I'm like, oh my gosh. And the first thing that came out of my mouth was, I'm going to Disney World on Monday. Um, so that was very shocking. All the doctors and everyone told me not to go. Um, but I still went. (laughs) That is so crazy. Um, when you told me that, I was just like amazed. You're quite the trooper. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I had just been through um, a C-section, so I was like, oh, this will be nothing compared to that, and uh-huh. it still was pretty, <laughs> pretty wicked. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. So what made you decide to go, to go on the vacation? So I didn't want to hold back anyone else from the trip. They were all still going to go, um, and if I stayed back at home, my husband was going to be at work, so... With the baby, it's either I would have no help if I stayed at home. I couldn't reach the crib to bend over because I just had surgery. So uh, that would have not been fun. Or I could go to Disney World and have five other people helping me. So um, it was a lot more, I think it was a wiser choice that I went, to be honest. It, it would have been pushing myself more at home. Yeah, I mean, and ev- Disney makes everything a little bit better. You would have been miserable at home. <laughs> I know, and I got to ride a scooter for the first time, so that was fun. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, my gosh. Yes, that's just so crazy. Um, okay, so talk about your scooter rental. Where did you – did you rent from uh, somewhere in Orlando? Yeah, so the Disney-approved service is Scooter Bug, so that's who I went with because they just drop it off at the hotel and they pick it up from the hotel. There's not much for me to do. Um, so it was really easy. It was ready, and – but it was really easy. I just got the cheapest scooter there was. And what I learned is when you have the room on the scooter, you fill it with more shopping bags. So I definitely was taking it to the shops and shopping and everything like that. And it was really convenient, to be honest. That's really nice. So what resort did y'all stay at? We stayed at the Riviera. Mm-hmm. Um, originally, we were going to take our trip in June. Um, and that got canceled because of covid um, we rescheduled it, I think it was August, um, and then I forgot why we decided not to go in August. Uh, I think it was just so my sisters could come. I honestly don't remember the reason, um, but we decided we'll stay at the Art of Animation Suites because my mom and grandparents decided to join in. Um, then Disney announced that they were not going to open the Art of Animation Resort until a week after our stay. So I called, and the only resort that could accommodate our party size was the Riviera. So we got updated to the Preferred View two-bedroom villa at no additional cost. So it was like $1,000 for the whole stay. And That's that was amazing. really nice. <laughs> I, that is just absolutely amazing. So what did you think about the Riviera? I absolutely loved it. I, to be honest, I was a little bummed. I've never stayed at Art of Animation before, and I was really excited to stay in the Lion King suite. Yeah. Um, I love that movie. Um, <laughs> so I was a little disappointed, but I got over it really quick. Like, this is a major upgrade. Um, then I got really excited about that resort, and it was just, like, the pictures don't do it justice online. Like, the close Skyliner access, the pool is amazing, and the restaurant, like, the food was so good, and everything was, like, clean and pristine and white, and I just, like, blew me out of the water, and it spoiled me from staying anywhere else, I think. Like, I just loved it. Oh, yeah, that would be so hard. You're like, uh, I just want to <laughs> So I went and looked at pictures online at the Riviera, and they don't show a lot of pictures of the pool. What is the pool like? So it actually has a, like, a walkout pool, like, okay. where, you know, when you're walking into the beach and it just slowly gets deeper, that's yeah. how it is there. Um, and they have a splash pad for the little ones with stairs and, like, a little, like, fountains and things like that. It's just really cool. Um, they have a huge hot tub and a nice water slide. And overall, like, we had a view of the pool the whole time, and it's just a huge area. I liked it better than the beach club pool. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Y'all are very lucky that y'all got to do that. I know. And we didn't have to wait for the pool either. I know with limiting capacity, a lot of, there's a lot of wait times in general for the pool, but we didn't at all. And it wasn't really busy when we were there either. 
Oh, that's so nice. That was my next question. Mm-hmm. How was it when y'all were there? Like, was it busy or did you feel like, wow, this is really nice? Yeah, so I think it seemed busier than it actually was just because of the social distancing. The lines would be spread out. So if you're looking at the Haunted Mansion line and it's spread halfway into Frontierland, that's really intimidating. And you're like, I am not waiting in this. Uh, but you realize the wait's only 15 minutes. So yeah. um, I think all the people like spread out along the perimeter of the park and the rides made it feel more intimidating than it was. But overall, like, I think it was fairly slow. I usually go in September the day after Labor Day when it's the slowest for mm-hmm. kids first days of school. But I would compare it to that. That's really cool. So y'all went in October, but were the parks doing anything Halloween wise or no? Magic Kingdom had a couple of like the pumpkin decorations hanging up, but it wasn't like Halloween themed. They had a lot of their merchandise out because there was no party or anything like that. So I definitely had to get some of that, but yeah, um, it wasn't like as spooky as it usually is. Okay, so let's just go into your trip. What is the first park y'all visited? We went to Epcot. Um, it was food and wine festival, like the mini version. Mm-hmm. Um, so I found my scooter just hitting up the different stations, and I tried um, the cold ramen. I've never had cold ramen before in Japan, uh, and it had like a soft-boiled egg in it. That was really good. Um, and I sampled some of my sister's foods. She had some food in Canada and I think Mexico, too, so... Uh, it was really cool to just kind of sample everything and and eat there. I didn't really have any sit down restaurants because I was so busy just like nibbling on different foods here and there. Yeah. Oh, I know those festivals. It's so fun to just snack around and not have to go sit in a restaurant that you could eat at any time. Yeah. Yeah. Did y'all do any rides while y'all were at Epcot? Yeah. So we went on Frozen. Um, my daughter loves Frozen. She's 12 months old. So. Um, we took her on that and I was surprised. I didn't realize as a parent, um, compared to when I usually went solo, how loud the audio is. So oh, yeah. that was something I didn't expect and I, uh, make sure to mention it to people going forward just so they're aware, but she loved it. Like she loved seeing like the, the snow babies and she loved seeing Elsa and Olaf. So we did that one. Um, we did living with the land because that was gentle after surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's about all I did. I didn't do Soren. I didn't do any of the, the usual fun stuff. I had to take it easy. Mm-hmm. Did the rest of the people that you were with, did they do the other rides or did they kind of stick with you? Oh, they ditched me. <laughs> they, went on, they went on Soren. And, um, I'm not sure if they, I think they went on Test Track too. But uh-huh. um, I had my daughter and we were scootering around and I let them do their thing. That's so fun. So did y'all bring a stroller for her or did you? she just ride with you? We had a stroller. Just because okay. she needed to take a nap, we could sit her back. Yeah. Which was definitely nice because she did. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. That's so nice. Um, okay, is there anything else you want to say about Epcot or while y'all were there? Yeah, there was a lot of construction there. Mm-hmm. Um, I know they're redoing the area over by Mouse Gear and things like that, so I'm really excited. It looks like a big project, so I can't wait to see um, just how everything looks. Yeah, it should be so nice once it's all finished. We were there in March, and I don't know. It's just so different with all the construction walls up and stuff. But it will be exciting once it's all done. Even though I guess it will never be done because they'll always be adding something. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Okay, so I'm assuming y'all rode the Skyliner to Epcot, correct? Yes, we had to go to uh, Caribbean Beach for their main hub. Okay. So... I just rode on over there. I know you can take the Skyliner there, but we walked. Okay, I didn't realize you had to go from Riviera to Caribbean Beach to get in the hut. Uh, yeah, you don't have to, um, but that's just where the main area is. So yeah. you could take the Skyliner there and get off and board on a new one. Okay. Um, but we just walked. You know, it's nice to see the little lagoon and see Caribbean yeah. Beach a little bit. I know. That whole area is so pretty. Mm-hmm. And it was easy getting on the Skyliner with your scooter. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't the best driver on it. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure people that use it more are way more familiar, but like reversing and like parking in and knowing like how quick it stops, I was not very good at that. Oh, um, that's funny. 
<laughs> but I, I did manage to get in and still have plenty of room. Oh, that's great. And how did mm. you feel like physically after your first day at a park? I was so tired. <laughs> I mean, it's hard juggling a baby and, you know, I just got off of a flight and um, just surgery and pain in general, but I mean, it was, I think Disney was a nice distraction, so I didn't focus on the pain as much because I was just busy looking at everything else and taking care of my kid. That is true. That's a great way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the next park y'all visited? We went to Magic Kingdom. And y'all rode the bus there? Yes, we took the bus. That was another thing on the scooter. I felt so bad because they make the whole bus stop to load you on and off. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I felt bad for everyone waiting for me, but, um, it was, it was a quick bus ride to be honest. I mean, we didn't have a lot of stops in Riviera. It's just one bus stop and, and we were there. So that was quick. I just felt bad being the first person on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I like I was making everyone else wait. <laughs> well, you had good reason. I did. I did. Um, and something we haven't talked about yet, but you did get a disability pass, correct? I did um, in Epcot. I knew I wasn't going to take advantage of the pass because I know it's something for people uh, with more like anxiety or PTSD, something like that, that they get it. Mm -hmm. But the rides I could go on, like Peter Pan, they don't have a disability area. Mm -hmm. So I knew I wouldn't be able to wait in line. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be going on the big rides with the long waits anyway. Right. Um, like I, I couldn't get on the mine train. I couldn't get on Tower of Terror, things like that. So um, I just asked if I would be able to get it just for the small ride that I could go on mm -hmm. <laughs> just to help me a little bit. And they did grant it to me. So, um, any ride that I could get on, my family went with me, but if it was a big ride, like rock and roller coaster or, or something like that, they did wait in the standby line. It's a really nice option for, um, people to have. Um, so once you got it at Epcot, you, you, it was good for your whole trip. Is that right? Yeah, I just went to guest services. Um, they had little booths outside, so you didn't have to physically go inside. Um, and she granted it to me right away, and, and she understood. I was like, I'm yeah. just only going on the small, like the kitty ride, this, that. So I'm not going to be going on anything major. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about your day at Magic Kingdom. What were the first few things y'all did? We went shopping. <laughs> My family's shoppers. We like to to get the merchandise and the clothes and things like that. Yes. Um, but we went on over to the new fantasy land and we went on the little mermaid, which was really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, I waited in line at Big Thunder Mountain for my family to go on. And I was helping people that didn't know where they were. <laughs> like, awesome. their directions, like I worked there or something. I had nothing else to do. Um, so, and I did a lot of pin trading. Oh, that's so fun. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if they were doing the pin trading with COVID, but that's really fun. It is. I, I, even if I don't like the pins, I still like trading them. I guess like, oh, I can get all the ones in this collection, even though I'm, you know, I don't collect this, but I can get them all when I trade. So I like it. I think it's fun. I do too. I think it's fun as well. I know when we went one time, my boys were trading pins and then after they would trade one, sometimes they'd have like traders remorse. They'd be like, do you think we can go back and get our pin back? Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was a kid, I didn't know that they had to trade with you. I thought the cast members had to like the trade. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, they must have thought that was really good. And then <laughs> they told me they have to trade with you. I was like, oh, that's like, cool. Dang it. <laughs> that's not as fun. That's really funny. <laughs> um, what kind of, what did y'all eat while y'all were at Magic Kingdom? We went to um, Gaston's, and I had some of the apple slushy. I can't remember the technical name for it, but that's just what I call it. Yeah. Um, so we had that in the little um, cinnamon bun that they have. Um, we had the Mickey Mouse pretzel, and that was about all I ate there. I mostly ate at the hotel and brought snacks. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So while y'all were on, while y'all were at Magic Kingdom, y'all did no sit-down uh, restaurants. Correct. No, okay. we just did mobile order. I know I ate at Sonny and Clips. So that was really cool. Um, it was my first time mobile ordering, actually. So it was nice because I got to eat inside, and my daughter loved watching the little, like, dinosaur guy play in the keyboard and everything yeah. like that. And so she was distracted, and I could actually eat. So how did she, like, what were her reactions to being in the parks? I know she's very young, but 
I'm sure she still had some big reactions. Um, I think she was overwhelmed with the people in the heat just because we're from Wisconsin. So it's cold a lot of the times uh-huh. and being down there in October, I mean, in the nineties and, and hot, that was something she wasn't used to and seeing all the people. I mean, not, not very long after she was born, COVID happened. So she wasn't out shopping and things like that. So I think it was a little bit of a shock to her. Um, but she loved like the bubbles and I got a balloon. She loved the balloon and, and um, just little things like that. But the overall park, when we would be by ourselves or like on a ride, she liked it a lot better, but Mm -hmm. I think the crowds and the heat were a little overwhelming. Yeah. I didn't even think about poor little babies when they were born and they didn't even get to go see people. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They had a baby care center and that was so nice. Yeah. To take a little break. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And the air conditioning and I could rock her and, um, and everything that was just quiet and away from people and the cast members there were super nice. Um, so it's really nice that they have that in each park that you can utilize. Mm-hmm. That's really sweet. So, um, being so soon after the parks had kind of reopened, what was your like overall impression of the atmosphere in the park? I thought it was still really fun. I mean, it definitely was different. It's kind of strange when cast members talk to you and you can't see their face or, mm-hmm. you know, you can't smile at them or anything like that. I thought the, uh, the masks were going to be a lot more difficult than they were. I mean, I got used to it really quick, but mm-hmm. I mean, you don't realize how much you read people's lips yeah. <laughs> and things like that when they're talking. Um, so I feel like I had to repeat myself and ask what so many times because I couldn't hear them. Yeah. Um, but still the atmosphere besides the fact of the masks and things like that so many people were just happy to be there I mean to get out again and and to be at Disney World a lot of people were just so happy and I didn't see a lot of people fighting or like angry or anything like that it just seemed like everyone overall was just excited to be back oh that's so nice I think it's so interesting to talk about this now with you because so much is going back to the way it was so it, it was really like a moment frozen in time and you got to be there during that, and a lot of people didn't get the opportunity to. So I think this is really interesting. Yeah, it was so fun. I loved it. That's great. Um, so what else did y'all do at Magic Kingdom? Um, I mean, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't last there very long because my kid was just having a meltdown. I got her to finally nap. They had the cool down stations where you could take off your masks and uh-huh. the air conditioning and things like that. So I got her to nap in there. Uh, but overall, she was just cranky. So then I went back to the hotel by myself, mm-hmm. um, and I just got her to just relax a little bit and eat a little food away from the crowds. And we went, um, we waited for my parents to get back, or I should say my parents, my mom. Uh, we waited for her to come back, and we all went swimming. So it was kind of a nice break. Um, they stayed a little bit longer, but I could be away with the baby. And I could kind of look around the hotel more, too, and explore it, because you're spending so much time at the parks that... Uh, it was kind of nice to just look at the Riviera. Yeah, it kind of forced you to slow down. That's really kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Did your daughter like the pools in the splash area? Oh, yes. Yes, that was her first time swimming. So I couldn't oh. actually go in with her because I wasn't allowed to get my stitches wet or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was kind of a bummer, but it was still really cool to be able to just watch her swim with my sisters and my mom. Yeah. Um, she absolutely loved it. She just... My sister taught her how to splash, so we're definitely still doing that now in the theater. <laughs> so she was splashing, and she was going up and down the splash pad and everything like that. She was nervous at first, but overall, she just loved the pool. That's so fun. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what was the third park y'all visited? We went to Hollywood Studios. Okay. Um, I absolutely loved it. This was my first time experiencing Galaxy Edge. Oh, yeah. So... Oh my gosh, it was so cool. I loved it. Uh, but a lot of the live shows weren't open at this time, so there's no BD to be, no Indiana Jones, and a few days before we got there, Frozen opened up. So we made sure to do that, and my daughter absolutely loved it. Oh, that's so sweet. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Uh, what other rides did y'all do while you were there? Um, I did not do many, but I went... Um, and explored Galaxy's Edge a lot. I went to all the little shops that they have there. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was really cool. Um, We ate at the Studio Backlot. That was really 
we just had like burgers, pretty normal. But um, as far as attractions, I went on with my sisters on the Millennium Falcon ride, which was okay. really nice. My sister got a little motion sickness, but yeah. we went on it. <laughs> Yeah, because there's really not that many slow rides at Hollywood Studios. They're kind of all fast and furious. Right, right. So I was kind of banking on the shows, but <laughs> there wasn't many that were open. Yeah. Um, but still, so Rise of the Resistance, that was really easy on me. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of fun. I couldn't believe I actually got passes. That's but my fun. mom and my grandparents decided to stay back with my daughter, so they did not even use their passes, <laughs> which is crazy. But it was still, it took me a while to realize I was actually on the attraction because it's so different than anything else. Yeah, it's really cool. I loved that ride. Mm-hmm. That's so fun. I know you probably could have, like, sold their uh, boarding pass. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> like, I have boarding passes. I'm sure someone would have taken you up. Because when we were there, I remember we were riding on the bus to Hollywood Studios and we were sitting with this family and they didn't get a boarding pass and they were so sad. And I felt so bad for them. Yeah, they're really hard to get to. My whole family tried and I was the only one that actually got them. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Did y'all eat yeah, anywhere was... else while y'all were there? Yes, um, we ate at my favorite restaurant, the 50s Primetime Cafe. Um, it was just my grandparents and my daughter and I, but they even raved like that was the best food they had while they were down there. Um, I just, I love the atmosphere. It's kind of cool to look around and like, I remember this from my grandparents' house and I remember this like at my friend's house, just like the old vintage things in there. Um, and just that the servers are a little more spicy and sassy to you. I just think it's so much fun. I love that restaurant as well. And the food is so good. I don't think people talk about how good the food is enough. I know. I love that it's home style. It's like familiar food to you. And it's not anything like crazy. It's just comfort food. And I love it. I can just, the peanut butter and jelly shakes. I know a lot of people think they're weird, but it's just, they taste exactly like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that you drink. So it's just so unique, but still familiar at the same time. And I love it. Yeah. And that's a great restaurant to take your kids to because they know all the food. Nothing's like a surprise and nothing's too fancy or anything. (laughs) Right, they have chicken nuggets, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> I bet your grandparents love that restaurant, too, with all the decor. Yes, and the food was so good. I think um, they got they got the chicken, and they mm-hmm. split it. Um, but it was still, like, so good, and they had enough chicken. They shared it together and with my daughter. So, like, the servings were a pretty good size. That's awesome. So even though y'all were a really kind of a large traveling group, it sounds like y'all kind of broke up into smaller groups and did your own thing, which is kind of neat. Yeah. I mean, nobody got offended. If somebody was like, I want to go do this, then we'd be like, okay, see ya. (laughs) And just went with the flow. So that was really nice that um, nobody held anyone back from what they wanted to do. And we all, there's plenty of people to keep you company. If you wanted to go somewhere else, you wouldn't be by yourself (laughs) or things like that. That's really nice. That's a great way to travel with uh, different generations. So yeah, people do yeah. their own thing. That's great. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else about Hollywood Studios you want to talk about? No, just overall, just amazing food. And the Star Wars was amazing. Toy Story, of course, is amazing. So it's a very fun park. Yes, I agree. It's really fun. Mm-hmm. And in a couple of years, your daughter is going to love it. Especially when she sees yeah. all, when she like, She might be able to recognize the Toy Story, but I know even my teenagers, when we walked over there and they saw the Toy Story stuff, they were like, oh my gosh, it looks so real. It's does, and you feel so small being in there. (laughs) I know, I love it. It's so great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, what other parks did y'all visit? We went to Animal Kingdom last. Okay. Um, and my grandparents agreed it was their favorite park. Yeah. Um, it's a lot more spread out, and there's more shade because it's supposed to be, you know, like the rainforest and things like that. And um, overall, it's more spaced out and just shaded. So it was a lot more pleasant, I guess, than just kind of at Magic Kingdom where you're there's no shade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're just kind right. of roasting in the sun. So my grandparents definitely appreciated that. Um, and I kind of waited at Animal Kingdom a lot at Expedition Everest and mm-hmm. um, those rides I couldn't go on. I couldn't go on Dinosaur. So um, we kind of went in the little dinosaur area for my daughter. And mm-hmm. She rode on a ride with my mom. But um, there wasn't too much for me to do there except in Pandora. Mm-hmm. 
Did you get to do Flight of Avatar or Flight of Passage? I did because it's it's not rough and you're just you're just sitting on something. So so that was fine. Uh, my grandparents said that was their favorite ride. They absolutely loved it. Yeah. I know they were worried about like their backs and leaning, but everyone was totally fine and just they absolutely loved it. Yeah, I was wondering if you would be able to sit in that seat when that thing kind of closes into you, but that didn't bother your incision or anything. No, I purposely sat back a little bit just yeah, you know to give myself a little more room. Um, but overall it was pretty, I was fine. It was comfortable. And that was towards like the end of our mm-hmm. day. So I wasn't as like in pain as our Epcot day. So, yeah. So that was nice. And we ate at the restaurant over in Pandora and it was delicious. It's one of my favorites. Yes. It's so good. Mm-hmm. The blueberry mousse is just, I've never tasted anything like it. It's so delicious. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And you had told me that something kind of funny happened while y'all were there. <laughs> yeah, so um, I know the servers and um, cast members like to give magical moments to people. Mm-hmm. So um, when we were there, they kind of saw because everyone got different food and we were all kind of just sampling each other's food to try everything. Um, and the manager saw us doing that. So he just came over and brought us one of everything on the menu to try, like all the different meats. And everything like that. And we were like, sweet. So we got to try all the different desserts and the different foods and everything like that. And it was just so good. We were so full. Um, But then somebody saw my daughter sitting there, one of the cast members, and she brought us all cupcakes. And we were full. We were like, oh, my gosh, we can't do it anymore. (laughs) But my daughter liked the cupcakes. But it was was just so funny. Everyone kept bringing us food. That is so crazy. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Y'all had a lot of, like, magical moments on your trip. (laughs) Yes, it was so much fun. And just now I know what everything tastes like on that menu. It was so good. I mean, that's like a once in a lifetime experience, unless you're willing to buy everything. Right, right. And it was all like, I don't think there's one thing on the menu I don't like there. It was all so good. Well, that's uh, and I know the food looks so unique and different. So I know a lot of people are probably hesitant on trying some things there, but it was mm-hmm. all just delicious. Well, that's awesome to know for people who are going to decide to go eat there one day. Yeah. But yeah, I've only ever heard wonderful things about that restaurant. I've never heard someone say they didn't like it. Mm-hmm. It's so good. So did you get to do the safari or anything like that while y'all were at Animal Kingdom? I did not do the safari. Um, my whole family did and they took my daughter, but I thought it might be like the jerking mm-hmm. um, and the ride might be a little much for me, so I didn't do that. Uh, but they went on, and my daughter really loved it. I just kind of stood back and hung out and just, you know, relaxed a little bit. But um, they loved it. They saw a lot of the animals were out. And I think that was right around the time where a baby giraffe was born. Aww, uh, that's so, so that was really cool. That's so sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, did you get to do anything else while y'all were there at Animal Kingdom? Um, no, that was pretty much it. I mean, Lion King... That show wasn't open. That's one of my favorites, but um, I know it's open now, so that's really nice. Yes. Uh, so a lot of things were closed there, but it was still a lot of fun, even just to like relax. And it wasn't a park that we had to rush through. We could just kind of go with the flow and just look around at everything and look at the different animals and the different facts that they have around the animals and just learn. So it was a lot of fun. It's a beautiful park. I love that park. Mm-hmm. Yes. How was the weather while y'all were there? Um, it was very humid, and it was upper 90s, but I don't think it was really rainy at all when we were down there, which That's was nice. nice. Yeah. Um, I think October is just a great time to go in general. You don't have to worry about being too cold, but uh, the heat was still shocking for us being from Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of people could tell. They're like, are you from the Midwest? We have our little, like, personal fans and everything like that. That's really funny because we went one time in October, and we were wearing long sleeve shirts. But we're from Texas. Yeah. But I think it was like in the low 80s, high 70s. But some mornings we were wearing long sleeve shirts. Like I'm not even joking. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can tell. Like one time when I went in February, we were just in like regular t-shirts. And when we saw people in like light winter coats, I was like, what is going on here? (laughs) That would be us. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Our winters, it's like 50 and 60 degrees. And it does get cold sometimes. But yeah. We're, like, yeah. cold when it's 60 outside, and I know that is probably not the case for y'all. <laughs> no, we love it. We're like, yes, good weather today. Oh, that's so funny. 
Um, okay, so was that y'all's last park day? It was, yes. And then we just kind of hung out at the resort that night and kind of just soaked in the last night of our trip. You know, nobody wanted to go home. Yeah. What restaurants did y'all eat at at the Riviera? Um, we ordered a lot of their to-go food, and then they have a little bar. Um, they have a little bar that's right over by the pool, so we got pizza from there. It was super good. Mm-hmm. Um, their little mobile ordering that they have, I ordered pizza again from there, so I ate a lot of pizza, but it was delicious, and it tasted mm-hmm. up, like, unlike any other pizza I've had. It was so good. It's like thin crust and just delicious. Um, and they also have their bakery. So we got their chocolate chip banana bread every morning. My grandma went down and got it for us. And it was just delicious. Like all the food there was just like top of the line gourmet. Like I didn't, I just thought pizza was pizza, but <laughs> it was just so much better there. That's, oh my gosh, that sounds so good. I want to go eat there now. I know. <laughs> That's the one bad thing about coming home sometimes is you miss all that good food because once you're at home, it's just not as good. <laughs> I know, but it was nice. Like when we came home because of the resort, it had like a, a dishwasher there so I could wash all my daughter's little bottle pieces. Oh, that's so nice. Uh, that was convenient. And we had a washer and dryer so we could wash our clothes. Oh, wow. So like we did a lot of that still. Um, so we didn't have to come home with like a bunch of things to do. Wow, that's so nice. And y'all were in a two-bedroom suite, so that's good to know as well. Yes, yeah, so nice. much room. Like, two full bathrooms, and it had a total of three showers and a soaking tub. Oh, just my gosh. absolutely crazy. Like, I just wanted to shower and eat shower just to see what each one looked like. Like, it was so – it was bigger than my house, this room. It was just amazing. That is so cool. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've been to the parks a lot. What did you think of the having to use the mobile order? Did you like that? I actually liked it. Yes. I'm somebody that's very routine with my eating and I know I'll get hungry at noon. Um, and I know what time I like to eat dinner. So it was nice that I could kind of plan while I was in the rides. Like, okay, I'm going to be hungry after this and I can have food ready to go and I don't have to wait in another line or anything like that. So that was really nice. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier if you're prepared. Yes. (laughs) I think that's the key is ordering before you actually want to eat or planning to eat before you actually want to eat. Yeah. It was funny because a lot of people didn't know what the mobile ordering was. So they're all like congregated outside the restaurants, like trying to figure out the app and things like that. So um, if you you kind of play with it ahead of time, I feel like you'll have that step up. And when y'all were there, there were still a lot of restaurants closed, weren't there? A ton were closed, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would have probably been hard. Um, so y'all went and visited Disney Springs as well. Was that on your, like, travel day, or just did y'all do that on your last day? That was our last day. That was our travel day home. Okay. So we had an 8 p.m. flight, so we could still get another basically whole day out of it. But, yeah. Um, nobody had been to Disney, well, except for me, but nobody had been to Disney Springs since they, like, totally renovated it, changed mm-hmm. the bus route everything like that. So um, it was really cool going to World of Disney, which is like such a great store and gigantic. So Mm -hmm. just shopping like crazy. Um, Probably a bad move because it didn't fit in luggage. I had to buy more luggage, but we still just went shopping. It was so much fun. (laughs) That's so funny. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) It all fit on the scooter though, so... (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's a great story. You're like, it fit on my scooter, but not in my suitcase. <laughs> I know. I was like stuffing it in my grandparents' suitcase and my mom and my sisters, and then I sold to buy another bag. Like, I don't, I, I went in there, like, I don't need anything. And then you get to Disney World and you're like, oh my gosh, well, I can't find this back at home. Like, I need to get it now. Yes, that's how they get us, is they have stuff yes. that we can only get there. And then you have that feeling of urgency. <laughs> yes, yes. What other stores did y'all go to while y'all were at Disney Springs? Well, we went to the Christmas store, which was a lot of fun. Um, We went to the Art of Disney and saw people drawing and everything like that. So um, I was more into the Disney-themed stores just because, like, they have a Sephora there and they have, like, those kinds of stores. But we have those back at home, so I didn't really want to go with them. I didn't have Mm -hmm. need. Um, So we just mainly stuck to Disney-themed stores. Yeah, they have a lot of really fun stories to go check out, too. Yes. Did y'all eat anywhere while y'all were there? 
Yes, we ate at T Rex. Um, it was really fun. Uh, I know my sister hasn't eaten there before, and she's super interested in it. So um, it was really good. The food servings were huge, and the ambiance is cool. Like they have an ice age section, they have the prehistoric section, and like the desert area. And it was really cool to just see all the dinosaurs. My daughter was a little freaked out. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <was really> cool. <laughs> so, what kind of food do they have there? Um, they had Italian food and they had American food. Um, like a good mixture of both. So I just got rotisserie chicken and the golden potatoes, and it was like it was like a whole rotisserie chicken. It was huge. I'm like, oh, wow. I did not eat this. I didn't realize it was this much. Oh wow, that's interesting. I guess so because it's like probably big dinosaur like portions. Probably Maybe follows the it. theme. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else y'all do at Disney Springs that you want to talk about? No, um, just went shopping and we ate at T-Rex and then went back to try to stuff everything in our suitcases. Did y'all um, check out before you went to Disney Springs? Um, yes, we did. Yes, we did. And they held our luggage for us. So that was really nice to not like have to worry about that and everything mm-hmm. like that. And then y'all rode Magical Express back to the airport? Yes, the Tragical Express on yes. my back. Oh. <laughs> but it was still like I just love that bus. I love watching everything and and things like that. And still being at the airport, it's so much bigger at the Orlando airport than it is in Milwaukee. Um, so it was still really cool to see like the different shops they have there, and they have their Disney shop there and their Universal shop. So I still have fun at the airport. Was the airport crowded? No. <laughs> it was not and we didn't even have full flights because at that point they were still leaving like the middle seat open technically okay um so the flights were not at full capacity so um that was really nice there was just not a lot of people and we had a lot of flight to ourselves mm-hmm. that's really nice I know when we went part of me was really hoping they'd still have that middle seat open but not anymore <laughs> that was very I short-lived I think <laughs> Yeah. So, what was your overall favorite moment of your trip? I would say I'm seeing my daughter swim for the first time. I mean, it's such a fun pool, and there's so much space for her, and just, like, seeing her experience that in such a great place was mm-hmm. just really fun. That's so, so I love that she had that first moment there with my family. Yeah, that's so sweet. Aw. Mm-hmm. What was your least favorite moment, or the moment that didn't go as planned? <laughs> <laughs> um probably driving the scooter um I like ran over my foot so many times like in the Millennium Falcon there's a small elevator like all the scooter elevators are really tiny mm-hmm. um so fitting in there was not fun and then reversing out of them was even more difficult um so just learning how to navigate that like if I would have done it for a week and then gone I probably would have been fine but right. just because it was my first time it was that was very difficult You know, that's also something people should remember is when we see someone on a scooter, they might not know what they're doing. So give them a little grace. Right, right. And it's just, um, it it was nice because, you know, your feet didn't hurt or things like that after, but it was still like not easy. And it's definitely not like an easy way out of going to Disney because it makes um, getting on the rides more difficult Mm -hmm. and everything like that. Um, Getting on transportation more difficult. So definitely like, Give a little grace. Yeah, for sure. So how did you feel once you got back home? Did you feel, like, wiped out, or did you feel, like, glad that you went? I was so glad that I went. I mean, I I would have never experienced the Riviera on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, that wouldn't have been a choice for my resort. So it was really fun, and just kind of looking back on it, just – I experienced so many things in such a different way. And I was just so like, all I wanted to do was talk about it. I wasn't even tired at all. I just came home and just told my husband everything. That's so great. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you so much for coming on the show today. I loved hearing your story. It's so unique. Um, I don't know if I'll ever have another guest who visited Disney right after surgery. (laughs) You deserve (laughs) an award. (laughs) It's fun. It's a great, like, pick-me-up. So if they do decide to do it, I've, I've done it and I've survived. So. Yeah, maybe you, maybe you have inspired people. They're like, I'm going to have surgery and then I'm going to go to Disney so I don't have to just lay and be in pain. I know. It was nice. 
That's great. Well, thank you, Emily, for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening today, and I hope you enjoyed Emily's stories. Emily is the owner of Market on Main Street. She creates wooden farmhouse decor with a magical twist. Check them out on Instagram at Market on Main Street CO or visit her website to shop all her different designs at marketonmainstreet.net. If you would like more information on how Trolley Lane Travel can help you plan your next Disney vacation, please visit trolleylanetravel.com. If you plan a trip with Trolley Lane Travel and would like to be featured on the show, let your agent know. This is how we get our guests. And of course, the show would not be successful without your vacation stories. And finally, please help support the podcast by rating and reviewing it on Apple Podcasts. This is the best way for people to become familiar with the show. Visit us on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales to see pictures of our guests on their vacations. Again, thank you so much for listening today, and we will be back next week with a brand new guest. This is Jenny, and may all your Disney travel dreams become a reality.